Australia and Nigeria have enjoyed beneficial ties since 1960. The two countries have worked jointly in the Commonwealth and United Nations to actively encourage peace, prosperity and democracy on the United Nations Security Council. Australia and Nigeria are partners on counter-terrorism, combating violent extremism. Trade relations between Nigeria and Australia is anchored on commodities and recently jacked up to $350 million and it fluctuates year to year. Lately, by the records, Australia is looking towards enhancing its partnership with Nigeria in the area of mining since the Nigerian government has done a lot to ensure that the right policies are in place to encourage mining investors to bring in expertise to help make the sector a success. My guest on the program today is Nigeria's High Commissioner to Australia, His Excellency Ambassador Bello Husseini Kazari. He also, he also has concurrent accreditation to New Zealand, Fiji Island, Papua New Guinea and Vanuatu. Thanks for joining me on Diplomatic Ties. Thank you, Mr. Odin. Okay. Welcome to Diplomatic Ties. And we're doing our best to make it as convenient and easy as possible for prospective students. So what we can do is just um, support the efforts of West African countries to, to integrate, to organize uh, a better regional, political and economic uh, integration. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Diplomatic Ties. Building friendship and enhancing oneness among nations. Watch. Diplomatic Ties on NTA International. Now, when people hear concurrent accreditation to 11111 or 22222, yes. it, can you help us? What really does it imply? Uh, in a diplomatic uh, assignment, normally a country cannot cover everywhere. So the government, while sending an envoy, will assign him some other country within the region where he's serving to enable him also report and uh, relate with them politically, economically, culturally. Even though you are not resident there, but you are still a representative of Mr. President in those countries. Okay. So since you assumed office as Nigeria's High Commissioner to Australia, call it, it's, a, it's getting to a year now. Yeah. What has the experience been? Uh, the experience is quite challenging. And uh, I have to be frank with you that uh, it's a challenging job. It's a job that you are representing your country and you are making effort to portray your country in a good image. In, in some areas where people doesn't know you or doesn't know your country. So you have to be up and doing. My experience or the little experience since I assumed duty in Australia with concurrent accreditation to these four countries, the one you mentioned, that is New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Fiji Island, and Vanuatu. Myself and my colleagues in the mission, we work tirelessly to make sure our relationship with those countries continue improving. And I will be glad to tell you that the little time I'm in those countries, they appreciate the effort of the High Commission. Thank you. A lot will say 11 months or one year is too short to achieve, but yeah. the way you sound, it looks as though you, you, you arrived and you hit the ground running. Yes. And I'm sure it's not just in Australia you're doing this, you're covering the area, you're, you have concurrent accreditation too. Exactly. Okay. So what upcoming programs do you have or you're planning to have to sustain what we are, what we are talking about? Yes. Immediately when I assume duty, I try to look at what are the areas 
that Nigeria will benefit the relation with those countries. I will take step by step. Let me start politically. Politically, we have an agreement. We call it a program between Minister of Foreign Affairs of Nigeria and the uh, Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade of Australia. There's a program uh, every two, two years for the official of the ministry to sit down and discuss areas of interest for the benefit of the two government and the people of those countries. I discovered when I resumed since 2013, they have never met. This is due to the fact that uh, we don't have an envoy for almost two years. So I quickly go back to my table and dust the papers, and I was working tirelessly with them, with my Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the Australian Foreign Affairs and Trade to a state because these are the basic instruments where you will engage the two countries. And that is one of the aspects I feel uh, I'm doing, or well, my mission is doing great. Okay. Secondly, economically, I look at Australia as one of the developed countries in the world. And uh, there's a lot of issues that we will benefit from them economically. As we are aware, the federal government of Nigeria is thereby spying our economy from oil sector to non oil sectors. And mining is one of the areas where uh, Australia excels. I look at that area and I'm working seriously with the host authority of my country to make sure that we have the benefit of mining. I will give you more details when it comes to talking about the, the roadshow. Right away now, uh, we are organizing what, what I call Nigeria Roadshow 2018. Okay. I'll give you the details in due course. I'm interested now. This Nigeria Roadshow 2018, what is it all about? Is it the first of its kind or is it a follow up of past ones that have held in Australia? It is the first of its kind. Okay. And I feel uh, 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 immediately when I assume duty, I make effort to 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 see how we how I can bring the two uh, stakeholders in the mining sectors together. I'm working, of course, with, my, with, the, uh, with the approval of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Minister of Mines and Steel Development, and Nasima, and uh, other stakeholders. From Nigeria? From Nigeria. Okay. We are arranging, we are packaging interested participants who are into mining sectors and micro grid and renewable energy. The program will be in two st uh, states in Australia. One is in Melbourne from 22nd to 23rd. The other one is in Perth, that is one of the mining states, the biggest mining state in Australia. Yes, I think to take Nigerian mining investors and micro-grid renewable stakeholders to join them with Australian counterparts and discuss and see what Australia can offer to Nigerian investors. And I I'm proud to tell you that we are doing great. Okay. Right away, we are working s seriously, and uh, 
in the next one week or two, we started thinking of processing the visas okay. of those participants. We have a quite number of participants interested from Nigeria. Okay. Now, this Nigerian Road Show, yes. is it what I would say is a replica of um, trade delegation or economic mission? Yes, something like that. Okay. Yes, it is an uh, economic uh, trade mission, so we give it another name okay. just to portray Nigeria. Something like a, a packaging. Yeah, a packaging. Or a, or a concept. Exactly. A concept because we have to make sure Nigeria is known okay. in those countries. Okay. Because I know the mining sector has what we call a... A, st a stakeholder white groupings. Yes. You have talked about the Minister of Trade and Investment. You have okay. talked about the Minister of Solid Minerals yes. and other ministries. Mm. Is this all about government, government, government? Is there no private sector involvement? No. In this case, we try as much as possible to bring the two parties, both government officials and the private sector. In fact, our aim is to support the private sectors because that, these are the engine of growth. The government will support, gives them the, the, the conducive environment. Okay. Now, Australia is reputed for massive achievements and strides in the solid mineral sector. Yes. Now, from what you're saying, you're doing a lot in this. Mm. Nigeria has re-engineered a lot within the solid mineral sector in Nigeria. And given the policies, the policies are that they, they need more expertise into the country. Yeah. So who and who and who, who are these expertise you're taking there to explore and to cross-fertilize these ideas to bring back to the country to boost the, the solid mineral sector in Nigeria? Yes. Are the state governments involved? Yes. Okay. Can we I, have... Yes. I, as I mentioned earlier, I discovered that uh, Australia has enormous mining capacity and it is among the best, among the best, when I say best, I mean best, among the best countries into mining sectors. And they have skills. They have skills, they have the money, they have the resources financially. So I believe that uh, if we bring Nigerians, investors in those, in those sectors, we take them to Australia, it will be a win-win situation. No win-lose. Not win-lose. Okay. When I you say win-win, yes. what does it translate to now? Thank you. Of course, Nigeria will benefit more because they are, we are trying to encourage them to come and invest, not to come and take our raw material and go back. We are trying to encourage them to come and invest. So a lot of employment opportunity will be there in this country. So that is a win situation from our side. In their own side, they are looking where to invest. Let me give you an example. Okay. Australia is investing over 30 billion US dollars in Africa with over 700 projects in Africa. But not much in Nigeria. So I say, well, uh, why not? We are the giant of Africa. We have the resources. We have the money. We have the skilled people. We have the talented people. That is why we are encouraging them. We have some mining companies from Australia, but not much. So now our airport, by the grace of God, will bring more investors into Nigeria to come and invest. Okay. So it's a win-win The program, once again, is uh, diplomatic ties. My guest is uh, Nigeria's um, uh, High Commissioner to Australia, His Excellency Ambassador Bello Husseini Kazari. He also has concurrent accreditation to New Zealand, Fiji Island, Papua New Guinea, and Vanuatu. When we return, we hear more from him. Stay with us.
Welcome to Diplomatic Ties. And we're doing our best to make it as convenient and easy as possible for prospective students. What we can do is just um, support the efforts of West African countries to, to integrate, to organize uh, a better regional, political and economic uh, integration. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Diplomatic Ties. Building friendship and enhancing oneness among nations. Watch Diplomatic Ties on NTA International. Australia has huge capacity, huge capability, expertise okay. in the solid mineral sector. And yet the deposit solid mineral wise in Nigeria is more in Nigeria than in Australia. So how do you intend to really bring them down? Because I know a lot is being done as part of the diversification policy of the Nigerian government yes. to boost the solid mineral sector. Yes. I, I look at we, ha we are sleeping on top of money, Nigeria. Nigeria is a blessed country. We have resources on top. Well, Australia, that is why they are going outside their country. It's a blessed country, they have resources, but they are going outside the country. They are in 35 countries in Africa, investing over 30 billion, as I said earlier. And we have only few companies from Australia. That is why I, uh, I'm making effort with my team to encourage them. But I think because of the distance and the issue of security will give us a little concern to them because investors need guarantee of their okay. returns. So I decided to organize this road show so that we will uh, take our people first. Let them see us we are serious people. And I'm sure at the end of the day they will follow us back. Okay, so you talked about now your processing. Can you give us a date again, precisely when do you, do you intend to float this program in the year? Okay. It's coming up this year? Yes. Which okay. month, precisely? Yes, in August. Okay. In August, on 22nd to 26th uh, of this month, of, of August, I'm sorry. One, in, as I said earlier, in Melbourne. After Melbourne, we we'll move to uh, Firth. Okay. These are some of the mining s states, I can call them, where the financial muscles is there. Okay. I imagine maybe by dint of uh, oversight or planning, mm -hmm. you may have maybe left out one or two groups, yes. and they now hear that you're planning this in Australia, mm -hmm. being the high commissioner there. Mm -hmm. In case this happens, how do they get to reach you? to get involved. Yes. I, I make a lot of efforts to sensitize Nigerians stakeholders from the federal government to state government and to private sectors. We do it with Nasima because they are the engine of the private sectors. The president of Nasima, I'm, be, I'm happy to tell you that uh, she's very cooperative and we are trying to make this event annual event. So anybody wants to get involved in this must have to go to Nasima? Yeah, to, to Nasima. We have a consultant to Nasima. Okay. We can give, it's a TVL consulting firm which is working for Nasima. Also in Australia we have also a consultant who is also working with the High Commission. Okay, I know that years back, because of the issues of security, corruption, yeah. uh, when you meet investors as you're planning, yeah. they, they become, uh, they apply some cold feet because of not having confidence on uh, maybe uh, transparency in the country. But so much has been done yeah. in the onslaught on corruption. Yeah. And uh, the Nigerian president happens to be Africa's, Africa Union's uh, anti-corruption champion. Is this playing positive for you in your 
moves to exploit and gain more grounds for Nigeria in Australia? I'm in this job for more than 20 years. Let me be proud to say that I'm now a pool diplomat representing a country that people respect. I'm opportune to serve in so many places. But this time around, the name of Nigeria is back on track. Courtesy of Mr. President Muhammad Buhari. As you know, his integrity is, nobody is questioning it all over the world. The same in Australia, the same in New Zealand, the same in Papua New Guinea, the same in Fiji Island, and Vanuatu. These are the areas where I come at. Mr. President give us good hope. People respect us. Everybody know how he's making effort to fight corruption. And this is a big plus, not only to Australia, or to me as a high commissioner, but to all diplomatic uh, envoy okay. of Nigeria. Okay, by the last records, mm. it is on record that Nigeria's trade between Niger uh, with Australia mm. is in the neighborhood of three hundred fifty million dollars, and uh, it says it's on commodity. Yes. Now, in what you're doing, do you intend to also have some components of value addition yes. by the time you start this deal? Yes. Yes, uh, as you said, let me change it from dollars to Naira. Okay. We have a trade transaction between Nigeria and Australia, which is over 100 billion Naira. But as you said, it's changed every day. And uh, I'm proud to say that Nigeria benefit more because they, uh, they bought our crude oil where they sell some of the goods and services. Okay. In my own airport, after this trade mission, we are going to bring Australians more here to invest, refine, not just to take the raw materials outside, but to do the refining here. Like, like we, ha we, ha we, ha we have one is, uh, currently in India, they call make in India, not made in India, make, make in India. I see. So, I want to replicate something like that here in Nigeria. Something like that. Where they bring the investment, yes. exploit here, mm -hmm. produce here, yes. employ here, yes. and export from here. That is, that is the mission of the High Commission. Okay. And I have, the, uh, I have a, a supporting or encouragement from my Minister of Foreign Affairs. My minister, both the two ministers, the permanent secretaries, they encourage me. They are giving me a helpful hand to do the job. And I assure you, a benefit will come to Nigeria. You just talked about 30 billion naira investment uh, by Australia and Africa. Yes. And uh, you said Nigeria has less. Yes. So by the end of your uh, program, okay. not tenure now, okay. Do you intend to maybe hijack as much as $15 billion from the $30 billion investment profile? I'm thinking of more than that. More than that, okay. <laughs> because if you look at the resources in Africa, Nigeria is among the countries blessed with those resources. Unfortunately, we are not pushing too much or too pushing hard to Australian investors. Because they are straightforward people and they are willing to come and invest. So by bringing them to see what we have, this is a country that is blessed with over, over 44 uh, mineral sources, Mr. Odini. In this country, on top, when I say it's on top, while some other African countries they have one, two, three, but we have over 44 mineral sources on top, a large quantity. So by, that is anywhere I interact with business community in Australia and the, those countries where I covered, I show them what we have on the ground. When they talk about the distance, I say it's not a, an issue. 
Okay. So that, so that we don't we don't dwell much on Solomon Rad before we exhaust our time. Yes. There is this educational program by the Australian government where a lot of Nigerians yes. benefit from. Yes. And uh, by the, by the last count, I know that in Africa, Nigeria has more beneficiaries. Mm. How well is that program going? Mostly the Nigerian interest now. Good. We, from the High Commission, we always engage the educational system to give us the liberty to bring our nationals, to learn from Australians. Because educationally, Australia is among the best countries in the world. And they give scholarships. They have an Australian agency for international development. They give scholarships. They, they give short-term scholarships. They give long-term scholarships. And we are encouraging them, they are giving us okay. every year. Apart from that, they give training, capacity building training to Nigerians. Well, I, I we would not have all the time. Let me just ask you this last one. You yeah. met the relation somewhere, and you have this huge dream and uh, vision to yeah. take it somewhere before you leave at the end of your, your term at the mission there. Yeah. So what do you anticipate as a last word? My last word, I need the prayer of Nigerians to support Mr. President. He has a vision. He has the love of the country at heart. They should support him. Give him a chance. By giving him the chance, Nigeria will excel. Okay. Your Excellency, it was nice having you on Diplomatic Ties today. Thank you, Mr. Onini. Okay. I appreciate it. My guest once again on the program has been Nigeria's High Commissioner to Australia, His Excellency Ambassador Bello Husseini Kazaure. He also has concurrent accreditation to New Zealand, Fiji Island, Papua New Guinea, and uh, Vanuatu. He has talked so much about the exploits he's making to ensure that investors from Australia, Australia come in to tap the huge uh, resources in the solid mineral sector in Nigeria and other programs. We hope to see him again after the Nigerian show which is more or less an economic mission from Nigeria to Australia and also back in Nigeria in return. He has said it shall be a win-win, not a win-lose. Thanks for being there and on behalf of all of us, bye-bye. Welcome to Diplomatic Ties. And we're doing our best to make it as convenient and easy as possible for prospective students. So what we can do is just um, support the efforts of West African countries to, to integrate, to organize uh, a better regional, political, and economic uh, integration. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Diplomatic ties, building friendship and enhancing oneness among nations. Watch Diplomatic Ties on NTA International.